Welcome back. We're having a pre-budget uh, chat uh, just one day to the Treasury Cabinet Secretary, Henry Rotich, reading out um, the budget officially for the financial year 2018 to 20. Uh, 2018-2019 uh, financial year. That uh, particular budget amounts to 3.07 trillion, up from 2.29 trillion from what was witnessed in uh, the last financial year, which was 2017-2018. And once again in studio, Fred Omondi is a member of the Public Finance and uh, Tax Committee at ISPEC, as well as uh, Lydia Ndirangu is from Ernst and Young, just helping us understand and appreciate some of the factors surrounding our budget and what the next financial year would look like for us in the pre in the in the previous financial year 2017-2019, uh, the development expenditure was to amount to about 27%. That's uh, shy of the 30% that is expected um, uh, as uh, provided for by law. How, how do you analyze this? Definitely, that's a cause for concern mm. because it means we are spending most of our uh, resources on recurrent expenditure. Uh, and even if you go further into the development expenditure, then you'll see a lot of it is uh, financed mm -hmm. by development partners. So what we end up is a lot of the ordinary revenue, yeah. which is in terms of taxation mostly, is spent on recurrent expenditure. And, and so we have to borrow to, to finance development. Mm -hmm. uh, so, so that's one area mm -hmm. of concern, definitely. And in the current estimates, we see the level of development yeah. um, uh, expenditure that is planned is still below 30%. Mm -hmm. So it means we are spending less on development. The other area of concern is, of course, even once we budget for it, mm -hmm. is in terms of the absorption rate. And yeah. typically, you find at the end of the year uh, that uh, budget for development spending mm -hmm. has not been absorbed mm -hmm. either because of uh, issues with procurement mm -hmm. or, or uh, execution mm -hmm. of projects. Mm -hmm. And so we always end up lagging behind in terms of spending mm -hmm. uh, development expenditure. Mm -hmm. But on the other hand, when it comes to recurrent expenditure, we sometimes even revise the estimates yeah. higher mm -hmm. and we end up you know, spending more through the supplementary mm -hmm. budget. So we really need to uh, prioritize our development projects and make sure that execution mm -hmm. is carried out uh, properly. And that ties in also to uh, part of the question you asked about, uh, for example, the release of funds, yes. uh, whether it's to the counties or to finance mm -hmm. the projects. There is, there is a bit of work that needs to be done to ensure that there is proper planning and mm -hmm. execution so that we match the availability of funds mm -hmm. to the execution of projects. Otherwise, we'll keep uh, underspending mm -hmm. when it comes mm -hmm. to the development expenditure and overspending when it comes to mm -hmm. recurrent mm -hmm. expenditure. Does it mean that we need to review our procurement laws because the counties keep complaining about the absorption rate and, 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 and the amount of time that it takes for money to be dispersed from the national government to reach them? Well, procurement is one aspect of it. So mm. it, it, in our view, I think it's not just procurement yeah. that is, is an issue. As you are aware now, mm. it's, 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 a, it's a hot topic in mm -hmm. terms of the uh, current uh, issue with corruption. Yes. So it's not just procurement. We think it's, it's about aligning the, 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 the whole uh, supply chain or mm -hmm. the whole system to be able to, to, to execute mm -hmm. on the projects that uh, you know, the government mm -hmm. has put in place. So, so procurement is definitely one area, but it's not the only mm -hmm. area. It's not the only area. And, and, and there are other areas around capacity, mm -hmm. you know, of, uh, of the different agencies to be able to execute on the projects. There are other areas around uh, uh, maybe the contractors mm -hmm. and how we hold them accountable towards the project timelines. Mm -hmm. uh, more often than not, you see, uh, you know, contractors revising yeah. their estimates up, mm -hmm. upwards. In other countries, you're actually given time frames, and if you do not deliver, then you are penalized for that. But uh, in, in our case, it seems to be the reverse, mm -hmm. where there is Something a delayed delivery and mm -hmm. we pay more for, mm -hmm. you know, for, for extending mm -hmm. the deadline. Mm -hmm. so, so there's a whole lot that needs to be done mm -hmm. to align the execution to the budgeting and, and mm -hmm. indeed uh, the cash flows uh, okay. that the government uh, manages. Okay. Yeah. Lydia, what are your areas of concern in our budget? So when just uh, to add on what yes. Fred has said first in terms of uh, looking at the absorption rate, 
uh, when we're looking also at the national government, it's good to also look at the county level because for the county also from the county level, we have to also ask ourselves: Are they also utilizing the amounts that they've been yeah. given for development? Mm -hmm. And you'll find, based on uh, last year's report, only I think three counties were the only ones who actually utilized the funds allocated for them for development. Mm -hmm. The other ones did not meet the threshold, so they underperformed in terms of for the development. Uh, the money that were allocated to them for development was not utilized for development. So now when you're looking at that level, we ask ourselves if the people at the county level who are supposed to spur development from at the county level so that all of it can accumulate at the national government mm -hmm. are not actually um, meeting their needs in terms of uh, incurring or encouraging development, then that's an area of concern. Mm -hmm. And I think it should be very strict in terms of how the counties are also utilizing their funds. Because you'll find that if the counties themselves are not encouraging um, infrastructure growth, developmental growth, then that will mean that um, the purpose for which the counties were developed they will not have met their purpose because they're supposed to devolve the resources, the infrastructure and everything to the county level. Mm -hmm. So that now at least we need to be seeing the infrastructure, even at the hospital level, the roads at the county is actually improving. But you'll find that every time everybody is migrating from the counties, everybody wants to come to Nairobi. And you see where we are devolving and where we want the counties to thrive mm -hmm. so that each of the counties develop themselves, create more job opportunities and other business opportunities for people at the county level. All right. Yes. I want us to wrap it up on this uh, at this point. We have another live event that we need to cover now. But thank you very much. It's a conversation we will continue to have pre-budget during the uh, reading of the budget on Thursday and, of course, post-budget. Uh, want to appreciate you for just making yeah. time for us here. Um, uh, Fred Omondi is a member of the Public Finance and uh, Tax uh, Committee at ISPEC. And uh, Lydia Ndirangu is from Ernst & Young once again. Thank you very much. We appreciate your presence here thank on you. KTN News Desk. Back to definitely our top